the, the governance system that has evolved over time um, is, is broke, uh, is inefficient, and it has emerged like that for a reason. And that reason is that it has emerged in this sort of uh, haphazard fashion. So, right, I need, uh, this is an issue I want to focus on now, let's make an institution here. Here is an issue we need to do something about, let's make a treaty here. So it's come up sort of uh, by itself without these connections being made. But it's like herding a cat, governing uh, the environment is herding li like herding a cat because there are too many actors, each operates on their interests, each assumes that their interests are different from the others and they're going all over the place. So if you're developing countries, you have very different interests from if you are middle income countries, very different interests from if you are high income countries, very different interests if you are a business in a developing country than if you are a business in an industrialized country, so on and so forth. The diversity of actors, which is in many ways a good thing, makes the process of management of these actors very different. And that is one reason why you can't really have a one size fit all system and a czar with a whip herding cats. If you really want to herd cats, be nice to them. Uh, figure out what tidbits they want. Give them the incentive to stick together because they're not going to be whipped into, into, into compliance uh, like other species might be. So, so that's, that's the lesson there. But um, if I might, I do want to say sort of if you look at the story of how global environmental governance has evolved, in some ways I think it's, a, it's, it's also an inspiring story. So if you look back at 1972 when leaders of the world gathered at 19, in uh, Stockholm, uh, or even at the Brundtland Report, I would posit that they could never have imagined that we would have today a system as elaborate, with as much money, with as many actors, taken as seriously, at least in the rhetoric, as we do. So in some ways, the system has grown too fast, beyond our imagination. Uh, I have small kids, and they have this habit of growing up every year. And that means they grow out of their clothes. So either I can go and shout at them for growing up or I can get them new clothes. That's the challenge of global environmental governance. It has grown too fast and the system that we had created back in the 1970s no longer fits either the dimension of the problems or the dimensions of our aspirations. Environment is the perfect example. Environment has multiple issues. So we need to deal with biodiversity. We need to deal with climate change. We understand that we need to deal with them separately, but the two are connected. What happens to climate change will impact biodiversity. Similarly, those who deal with governance of biodiversity need to interact with those who deal with governance of climate change, and it goes on and on and on. Even more importantly, those who deal with how we govern financial flows make a lot of the rules that impact the environment. So they need to figure out the governance of the environment. Those who deal with uh, business, a lot of really what happens in the environment is affected by actors who are not purely quote unquote environmental. And that's why we need a governance system rather than one super organization of the, gov of, of the environment that's going to manage everything perfectly. I think the issue of global governance in general and global environmental governance in particular is central to where we go in the future. You cannot, simply cannot, bring about the type of transformational change that the world needs in the environmental arena without also transforming the systems of governance that are going to implement that change.